Hello folks, and welcome to part 2 of a League of Legends video featuring Twisted Fate. So in the first part of this video, there was all kinds of action going on in terms of Bristol's Twisted Fate character. If you look up at the scoreboard, you can see the total team score is 20 to 18, but Bristol's has 13 of the 20 kills and 9 of the 18 deaths. So he has been a very busy boy in this game. Bristol's is playing an ability power Twisted Fate in this game. That is, so that means that he has all this ability power. You can see 480 ability power. He has, has had a Majai Soul Stealer from very early in the game, and this, the number of stacks on that Soul Stealer have been going up and down throughout the game. He's been as high as about 12 a couple times. He's been as low as about f 3 or 4 a couple times. And uh-oh, this is bad news. Bristol's going to get trapped, going to get engaged on. And there goes a couple more stacks on that Majai. So enemy team just going to burst them down really easily. Not the safest place in the world to be. Over here, trying to farm over here so far away from the, his own tower. Not the greatest place in the world. However, what it does do is by having all those enemy champs over there in bottom lane, it does allow Magic Sarah to be pushing up here with Sivir. So it looks like she's going to ult on this tower. And one thing that Sivir can do is Sivir can do a lot of damage. So... Sivir, those towers do go down fast when Sivir pops her ultimate. Now the enemy team has to be coming for Magic Sarah here. You you know they're going to be coming in sooner or later. And looks like she's just going to suicide here, try to get that tower down. And yep, going to get the tower. Not going to make it out here though. I, or I can't imagine she's going to make it out. Uh, this Vigar and this Brand and yeah, there it goes. So not going to make it out, but did get that tower. Is it worth it to trade a tower for a death? Not sure. Not sure whether it's worth it. Meanwhile, Bristol's going in into a 1v2 again over here. Going to go after this Sivir and this Ezreal player. Um, not sure that this is the safest in engage to go in on. So anyway, oh, is going to go in for that Sivir. Uh, looks like he is going to take down that Sivir, but Vigar just, again, doing so much damage in the back there, is going to get that Sivir player. And, oh, Ezreal True Shot Barrage going to finish off Bristol's there. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, again, just not sure if picking that one that fight 1v2 is the best idea. Now Renekton doing the same thing. Going to try to pick this fight 2v1. Uh, going to get stunned on the Event Horizon, but he's pretty tanky. Uh-oh, uh that Event Horizon is going to freeze him in place long enough for the rest of the enemy team to come here. And Renekton, is he, he's not going to make it out of this. Now Brand, Brand, you can't fight this. You've got to get out of here. You guys can't keep picking fights 1v3 and 2v4. You're going to lose if you do that. So yeah, Brand in trouble. He's going to use Ghost and Flash. That is going to get him out of there, but now his summoners will be down for the next two to three minutes so that's not the greatest situation when uh when poor Renekton was dying 1v4, that probably wasn't the time to run in and try to save him. And believe me, I know you want to save your teammates, but sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Anyway, Magic Sarah, though, does have teleport in this game. You can see did bring teleport. Sivir, a good champion to bring teleport on. Again, I, I criticize people sometimes when they bring teleport needlessly, but Sivir, so good at pushing, a good champion to get teleport on. By pushing this minion wave repeatedly, if they can get any of these, any of these base towers down, you can see this base tower is the one that's most exposed. If they can get any of them down and clear the way to an inhibitor, then Bristol's will be able to start backdooring with Twisted Fate. Best champion in the game at backdooring. Nobody is better. Can just ult and then he's instantly next to the inhibitor so, so fast. So if they can get down any of these base turrets, it will open up some powerful plays. Now, one of my big criticisms for the enemy team right now is the enemy team has had a champion advantage for most of the last 10 to 15 minutes. Shaco did disconnect earlier. He came back once, but he's still disconnected now. You can see he's under leveled, he's under farmed. All, all this team really needs to do when the when Bristol's team is obviously trying to do some backdooring stuff, what they need to do is exactly what they're doing now. Take five together and push a lane together. Group us five and push together. Um, because when they stay as five, they can force Bristol's team into team fights that are at disadvantageous odds. So like even if Bristol's team comes here, then it's a five on four, and that's in the advantage of the other team. So they should really be sticking together more, not splitting up nearly as much as they have. Another thing that they can try doing because because of the five before is the enemy team could try to force Baron fights. Like they could try to force Baron and force Bristol's team to come in. Nice flash by Bristol's trying to catch someone, but forced a flash by the enemy team. Uh, forced a counter flash from the enemy team in order to get away from that gold card stun, so nicely done. Anyway, right now here, Bristol's team sort of sieging this tower. They're, with only having four here, they're not really strong enough to siege towers. Um, Uh-oh, Bristol's and Magic Star getting trapped in the middle of that Event Horizon stun. Does manage to get out of it, though. And there's the pop on the Banshee's Veil on Amumu. They would probably do better to do what they were doing before, which was split pushing lanes. I mean, that's going to make their KDA, their kill death assist total, look very bad because they're going to keep dying when they do this split pushes. But again, they, they really have a team that's set up to be effective for split pushing just between a Teleport Sivir and a Twisted Fate. Their, their team is really set up for, for that kind of play. That is, always pushing side lanes, using Teleport, using the Twisted Fate's gate to always be 
pushing lanes, pushing side lanes. Like right now, they're very vulnerable because you can see their side lanes are both pushed up. Like this minion wave, was, there's a minion wave pushed up here, there's a minion wave pushed up here. The enemy team should take all five and just go straight up mid right now. Like that's what they should do. And force Bristol's team to defend that play. I don't know what they're doing. Or alternately, they could go to Baron while all the lanes are pushed. They could all go to Baron and force a Baron fight. Either one of those would be good plays. But um, like two here in mid, this is not smart. Having two here in mid, they, they need to be roaming as five by this point in time. We're at the 35 minute mark. We're late enough that they should be joining together as a team. They shouldn't be split up individually. Uh, having two champs here like this is just an invitation for Twisted Fate to ult in behind somebody, stun them with a gold card, and then you score a pick really easily. But anyway, I do like what Bristols is doing here. He's pushing in the side lane, doing a good job. Now here comes the rest of the enemy team. There they go. Going to engage here. Uh, Magic Sir and Renekton just need to get back to the just need to get back to the safety of this tower. They can't fight out there in the open. Going to lose if they try to engage 2v5 out there in the open. So anyway, they need to need to just get back and defend this as best as possible. We'll see. Bristol is going to looks like he's going to come here and help out. I don't know why they backed off this tower. Why would the enemy team back off here? They, they can, even if they don't have minions, they could just have someone tank the tower. I mean, 2v5, they can win that. So, unexpectedly passive play from the enemy team. Don't know why they didn't just go in and burst down this tower there. So, um, anyway, they've taken too long. Now Bristol's has managed to get back here. And uh, their brand player is going to revive pretty soon. So, I mean, they had a big, big advantage there. Oh, so Sivir way out of position, way out of position. So, that's going to be a kill on her pretty easily. Renekton did get trapped by that Vigar stun, but... No, oh, hitting the creep next to Ezreal with the gold card stun. That's just a misclick there. Unfortunate. Will Renekton survive this ignite? Yes, just barely. So, yeah, they really shouldn't have been able to defend this tower in that 3v5. First 2v5, then 3v5. Oh, can engage on this Vigar. Can they finish him off? There's the Renekton stun, and Bristol's is going to get the kill. Can Renekton get out? No, not going to be able to get out, though. Now they're going to uh, open up, engage on these two. Wow, the Brandalt doing a lot of damage, splitting between the two. Now they just need to get one more stun. There they go. Bristol's picking up a triple kill and the enemy team has screwed up very badly here very very badly that was their opportunity to push into the base they didn't take advantage of it they dawdled too much gave enough time for bristol's team to respawn and now bristol's team can push there's four down on the enemy team brand is the only one up they will be able to get this this tower here uh, i would at least i would have to think so anyway there's enough minions there they should be able to get it there it goes gonna take this down they should be able to get brand too without too much trouble oh well, they are going to get Brand, but Bristol's is going to die to the Brand ultimate. So, technically, they score an ace. Sivir has just revived. But that is going to cost poor... It's going to cost poor... Um Poor Bristol, some more stacks on his Majai Soul Sealer. Anyway, down here, though, huge minion wave pushing this tower, and this is a great use of teleport here, guys. Beautiful use of teleport. Teleporting to the minion wave. Gonna pop that Sivir ult, push down the tower, and then probably should just get out. But it looks like Magic Sir is gonna engage with Rud Boy, and this Sivir player is very, very low. And wow, just gonna straight kill straight kill the enemy team Sivir. So really nicely done. Um, oh, spell shielding the Vigar Dark Matter! brilliantly done such a nice play there from from magic sarah Sivir. so well done spell shielding the attack that would have killed would have killed her and then getting out so guys i criticize a lot of teleport use i hate it when i see someone just teleport back to a lane that's not being pushed that is how you use teleport guys big minion wave pushing a tower teleport to the tower Sivir ult for all that extra attack speed and down the tower goes in the you know five seconds before the enemy team can get there. So really nicely done. And then spell shielding the dark matter that would have killed her. Just, just really, really well done. So anyway, looking at the scoreboard again, even in kills, you can see 27, 25, uh, still playing down the Shaco. Shaco still has not come back yet. So still playing 4v5, very impressively thus far. In terms of towers, let's see, there's three towers down for Bristol on Bristol's side of the map. There's six towers down on the enemy team's side of the map. They are up the three dragons. So even though they're down four, even though they only have the four champions, they have a lot of global, a lot of global gold and experience on their side. So that's one of the things that's keeping them in the game. However, as the enemy team starts to hit 18, you can see 17, 17, 17, 16. As these champs start to hit 18, that advantage of being having the leveling advantage is going to start to go away. So this match will get more and more difficult as time goes on. However, all they need to do is get one of these base towers down. You can see they pushed all to the they pushed to all three base towers. If they can get one of them down, then they will be able to start doing back throwing stuff. Oh, what is this brand doing? He's so far out of position. Why is he by himself? Such a big mistake. They're gonna take him down easily. Yeah, and, and when when you have a five on four, you just can't do this. You just can't give away picks like that to the enemy team so easily. Because now it's a four on four and they've given up their advantage for the next 50 seconds. So yeah, I mean maybe, but you never should have been there in the first place brand i mean no offense but that was not the place where you should have been just a huge mistake should never have been in that position on the map 
Anyway, I don't think that they're strong enough to just push into this base four on four. I uh, don't think that they're going to be able to do that, though. If they can engage out here, though, they'll have a decent shot. Anyway, that gold card did get uh, did wear off, so Bristol's going to have to lock in another one. But I don't think they're going to be strong enough to push into the base here. Not unless someone on the enemy team makes a big-time mistake. Looks like they're backing off. Looks like they're not going to try to push in. Just going to get in a little harassment. Yeah, with them not having Shaco, not having that extra champ, they're, it's going to be very difficult to break one of these, one of these side lanes. Uh, one of these towers here in the base. Oh, this Amumu is chasing a long way, though. Very aggressive chase from this Amumu. Uh, they might be able to turn and fight this, but again, have to be careful the rest of the enemy team. Yep, here comes the rest of the enemy team. Gonna engage on Bristol. Oh, nice flash! Flashing away from that event horizon. Really well done. Are they gonna pick off that Sivir? No, I don't think they're gonna get... Yes, there it is. Didn't think they're gonna get her. There's another flash on that part of the brand. But he is gonna get taken down. <coughs> Excuse me. Coughing in the middle of the team fight. There goes the Amumu ult. That's gonna take down Magic Serum. And now Bristol's going to pop his ult right as they try to chase him down. And there we go. That's a beautiful escape on the part of Twisted Fate. Very well done. That's how you can get out of this situation. Just run into the brush, pop your ult, and in the three seconds it takes them to find you, you've gated out to another position on the map. So Bristol's going to make it out. Again, th that fight didn't really go that well, though. You can see one for two, not the kind of exchange they want to engage in. And wow, that is a lot of gold there. A lot of gold. Unfortunately, Bristol's has more or less maxed out his build. At this point in the game, with him having this much gold, having so much gold and having basically itemized out, he really should just sell the Soul Stealer. I mean, it's only providing 72 ability power. He could replace the Soul Stealer with a lot of different items. He could build another defensive item, or he could... Um, actually, the item he probably should get is Zhonya's Hourglass. That would give him armor, which he needs very, very badly, and would also give him the Stasis feature and a little more ability power. Anyway, Bristol's engaging 1v4 with the enemy team, is still going to get a kill. Uh, very nicely done. I don't know how he's getting away with this. I don't know how the enemy team, with their numbers advantage, isn't just pushing over towers. Oh, gonna go in, get the stun on Brand, and gonna score another pick. That Brand has just been out of position so many times in this game. I mean, he has a lot of ability power, but he's just been so out of position. Maybe he really should consider selling those Sork Shoes for Merc Treads. Might be more useful. Anyway, we've sort of got a reset on the game now. Looks like they are now... Oh, they now now Bristol's team has the advantage. Two enemy champs down. They can push with a four on three here. Even without Shaco, they can push four on three. Might be able to get into the base. Brand probably should come down and join the rest of the team here. Anyway, Bristol's looks like he's going to try to come in behind the Sivir. Does he have his flash up? No, does not have flash up. If he did have his flash, he could have flashed in and stunned. Uh, anyway, going to get in a hit on this tower. With no minions, though, they really can't go in. Uh, they're going to need their minions at least. And time is starting to wear off. I think if Brand had been with them, they might have been able to do some damage to that tower. But can't really do it now. Going to have to back off. They also could have considered Baroning there because Brand was at the top of the map. Would have been a risky play, but they could have considered going for it. Now, with everybody reviving on the enemy team, I don't think they could go for it. Don't think that that's a safe move, but... Anyway, they might, they should, they could do Dragon though. Dragon will go down very quickly at this stage of the game. Yeah, it looks like uh, Magic, Sarah, Sivir, and this Renekton player are just gonna do it together. The, the two of them should be able to do Dragon without too many problems. If the enemy team comes though, that could be very, very bad. They could actually lose the game if the enemy team shows up here and just kills the two of them and then pushes into the base. But it doesn't look like they're gonna do that. Oh, uh-oh, here's Ezreal. Uh-oh, this is trouble. And I don't think they got that dragon. Maybe they did. Uh, I think that Ezreal actually stole it. Magic Sarah gonna engage 1v1 with this this uh, Ezreal. Oh, Bristol's doing a very aggressive gate in there, gating right into the middle of the enemy team. I don't know if that's the best play. Uh, oh, there's the Mumu stun, and I can't imagine he's gonna make it out. Yeah, he's gonna go down there. And Renekton, looks like Renekton's gonna kill that Amumu player. So they're going to go two for two uh, somehow. Or no, two, two for three. This is not good. Renekton needs to get out of there. If Renekton dies, they can just run up mid and, and kill the enemy team's base. So Renekton, fortunately for them, he's gonna make it out. But two for three. When you're down champs like this, you really can't afford to do that. Now, with their three surviving champs, they have a three on one right now. The enemy team, all they have to do, they have so many things they can do. They can push down mid. They can go take Baron. Instead, they're going to bottom. Not the best play. I, I don't think that was the right play in that in that situation. This was their moment to go and push into the enemy team's base, and they're not going to take advantage of it. Um, so anyway, oh, that Brand is going in on this Renekton. Is he going to be able to finish him off? Yes, is going to be able to get a kill. So that Brand, even though he's been out of position a lot, is going to get a kill on Renekton. He has to be careful here, though, because Bristol's is going to revive in five seconds. Bristol's can revive and ult in behind him. So that this is not really a safe place for that guy. Let's see. Could potentially gate in, or no, actually gate stole, destiny stole on cooldown. Never mind, excuse me, didn't realize that. So, yeah, not the best. I mean, so the enemy team does get a t does get another kill on Renekton, and does get this tower, but I, I feel like they probably could have gotten an inhib off that, or they could have just taken Baron. Either one, I feel like either one would have been a much stronger play. 
Anyway, though, you see the enemy team is sort of slowly wearing down Bristol's team. They're starting to get closer and closer to the base. The longer this game goes on, the more the 4v5 is going to start to be telling. Unless Shaco comes back, they're really going to be in trouble. They need to start doing some crazy backdooring stuff, crazy backdooring, uh, split pushing type stuff. So you can see that's what Bristol's is kind of doing now. This minion wave is going to start pushing now that he's killed them. So he really needs to get in some kind of backdoor, just try to keep the side lanes pushed as much as possible. One thing they can do is they could run with four to, they could run with four champs to say uh, bottom lane, have all four champs in bottom, and then when the enemy team goes to fight them bottom, then Bristol's instantly ults up the top lane, and then he can start pushing that, so that's the sort of thing they could be doing, something like that. Uh, or, for example, if the enemy team all goes over here, tries to push, tries to push this tower, they could defend the tower, and then he could then he could gate somewhere else. So anyway, just have to look to start doing stuff like this. I noticed that Bristol bought Tristal, Triple Pot. He bought the three elixirs, red, blue, and green. Um, not the worst way to spend his money, but I think that he would have done better by selling that Majai's and, as I said, replacing with another item. I think that Zanya's Hourglass would be really good, particularly when... They, the other team focuses him in these fights. Like, let's say that Vigar um, ults him with his Primordial Burst. That is a relatively slow-moving ult. If Bristol's had Zanya's Hourglass and he was fast enough, he could technically uh, go into stasis and actually dodge the the ult there if he was fast enough. So, anyway, just seems like the right item because he's so low on armor. Uh-oh, what's Bran doing? He's out of position again. And once again, Bran hands the initiative right back to Bristol's team again. So now it'll be 4v4 for a full 60 seconds as we're late in the game. And at level 18, it takes you a very long time to revive in League of Legends. So that, a very bad play. Still don't know why the enemy team hasn't been able to take Baron or push down one of these mid-towers. I, I just feel like if they group up as five and push, then they should be able to achieve these team objectives. They keep getting picked over and over again, which is exactly what you can't have happen when you're losing. Uh-oh, look at this. What's happening again? Sivir's getting picked. However, oh, a whole lot of AoE here. Wow, this is going to get flipped around. And this is actually going to go really well for the enemy team. They're going to kill Bristols. They're going to polish off that Renekton player as well. And, no, well, there goes Renekton. They're going to polish off that that brand player earlier so wow yep yeah, this is trouble so two three for two or two for three exactly really two for or really a one for three since they had already killed brand earlier this is exactly what you can't have happen when you're down a player so this is very very bad news the, the enemy team has to get an inhibitor off this there's no way that they can't take inhib three on one I mean, they can just they can just tank the tower. All Silver has to do is pop that ultimate, have a Mumu tank the tower, and it's going to go down. Like, there's no way that, that, that this tower should stay up. Um, Magic Sarah, I mean, doing her best to defend this. I don't know why they're not just hitting the tower. Like, what is this enemy team doing? Why are they not just hitting the tower here? Just, I don't understand this at all, guys. I, I don't know how this tower has stayed up. There, There's no possible way that tower should still be standing. All they have to do is have a Mumu tank the tower, have Sivir Popper ult, have all of them attack the tower, and it's going to go down. Anyway, Bristol's buying the Oracle. Uh, not the right buy here. Uh, again, would do better just to sell Majai's and replace it with a more useful item. Notice that Bristol's has replaced his Sork Shoes with Mercury Treads. That's a good buy there. Mercury Treads going to be more useful. Oh, and look at this. Who's out of position again? Yeah, it's Bran. Bran out of position for like the fourth time this game. Just handing these deaths to the enemy team. Opening up... Uh, opening up... Uh, just sending it back to four on four. Exactly the sort of thing that, that he can't afford to do. Anyway, down here, this, this minion wave pushing right up to the base, they could consider having Sivir teleport and, um, and Bristol's gate in there and possibly try to go for that tower. But it doesn't look like they're going to go for that play. Instead, they're kind of splitting up here right now. I'm not really sure what they're trying to do here. So, anyway, we'll see. Bristol, so Bristol has a little bit less magic penetration. He did give up the spell penetration. So that's a little unfortunate. But having Merc Treads will do a lot to help keep him alive. That will help. Uh, one other thing, notice that they fought like right here in the last fight. The, the enemy team has a lot more area of effect damage. They have the Vigar area of effect stun, they have Amumu stun, they have Brand ult. So uh, I don't think that fighting in closed quarters really favors Bristol's team. I feel like they do better when they're out in open spaces. Uh, like when they use the Vigar stun right into the Amumu stun, it really just wrecks Bristol's team. So I don't know if this is where they want to be picking the fight. I, I, I feel like this is a bad place for them to be fighting. Also, they're all engaging on that Amumu, not the one they want to fight. Bristol's is going to flash back. It's going to keep them alive there. They are going to take down that Amumu, and everyone's going to live on their team just barely. Everybody's really low, but they are going to score the pick on that Renekton. Or not on Renekton, on um, 
on a move there, so they are going to get that kill. Uh-oh, Sivir in trouble here. There's the spell shield a little late, though. Now Renekton's going to go in. Renekton, I know you've got the Guardian Angel, but still shouldn't be going in. Bristol's going to gain in. Oh, nice port from Bristol's. Is going to go in there. Looks like he... Is he going to survive this? Oh, 2 HP? No. Brand passive going to kill him due to the Brand Ignite. Almost made it out. I thought when I saw the 2 HP he was going to make it. That Banshee's Veil did come back up and blocked one negative spell. So unfortunately is going to go down there. That's a shame. And yeah, enemy team. Uh, three on three right now. I again, I feel like they... I feel like they should take Baron or, or, or something. I feel like every time the enemy team has an advantage, they just go back and push back minion ways. Now, granted, that is use. I mean, re remember, the Bristol's team does have a teleporting Sivir and a Twisted Fate, but, I mean, once they get an inhib down, then those minion ways will stop pushing. So at some point, they just need to try pushing into the base on, on Bristol's team. And I, I just feel like they, they could have done that many, many times throughout this game. Anyway, Bristol's 23 kills, 15 deaths, 8 assists. Crazy game thus far. So much action. Everybody's getting super farmed because we're getting into the late game. You can see Sivir, Matamune, Warmogs, uh, Mercury Treads, Banshee's Veil, vale, Bloodthirster. So everybody's getting close to a fully maxed out build. You can see everybody's been in this game for so, so long. We're getting to the 50, we're up to the 50 minute mark. As I said, this has been a very long game. Uh, still no inhibitors down. Neither team has even gone for Baron yet. So I don't know what that says about this game. Probably, probably doesn't say the best things about this game that neither team has gone for Baron. Even though uh, Twisted, Bristol's Twisted Fate tends to be going down mostly to Vigar's damage, I, I do feel like he should probably get a little bit more armor. I feel like running around with under 70 armor right now at this stage in the game, a little bit dangerous. Anyway, there's the Twisted Fate ult. You can see where everybody is. It looks like they're going to go for Baron now. I, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I feel like there were much safer times to go for Baron than this. Don't feel like this is necessarily the right time. It would be a 4 on 5 if they go if they go and try to do this. Or oh, Vigar did just revive. Anyway, it looks like they're going to going on this brand and oh look at this brand out of position again but there's the aoe stun there's the amumu ult looks like they are going to take down bristols they are going to kill the brand on bristols team and once again engaging in this spot so much aoe damage for the enemy team just feel like it's a bad place for them to engage now they're chasing after magic sarah can she get away is she going to be able to make it out of here uh ignoring that renekton he's going to go back in there oh banshee either banshee is very spell shield popping at just the right moment so Magic Sarah Sivir is going to make it out of there. Renekton getting killed. It's a four on one right now. All they, again, all they they have a free Baron if they want it, or they can just push one of these lanes. I, like, I, I feel like they just need to push mid and take that inhib. They don't even need to wait for minions. Just have a Mumu tank the tower, have everyone else attack. I mean, you can see it. It's a four on one. There's nothing Magic Sarah can do to stop this. But they're, they're still not going for it. I, I don't get it. I just don't understand. This, this enemy team... Like, in order to lose 4v5, when you have a, a 5 on 4 advantage, it's really easy to win. In order to not win, you almost have to be not trying. Like, they're just not trying to win right now. Like, I don't get it. Um, they could have had mid and hib, so, mid tower and then hib so, so easily there. And they didn't even go for it. I, like, what is the enemy team doing? I, I, I don't understand. Or they could have taken top tower. Like, they just, they won a team fight. It was a 4 on 1. And instead of pushing the enemy team's base, they all go back to heal. I mean, it, it's just crazy. It's it, it, like it's pure insanity to go do something like that. So anyway, it looks like the game is going to go on. Everybody has revived now on Bristol's team and they didn't lose anything, even though they got totally wrecked in a team fight. So, oh, well, anyway, Bristol's porting over here. I'm not sure. I guess he was going for the enemy team's blue. Seems like a little bit of a strange thing to go for there. Not sure why he decided to head there, but oh, well, anyway. Anyway, it looks like Bristol's going to go up to top lane. He and Magic Sir are going to push this. It looks like his ult is down, so he won't be able to ult out. So, and uh, meanwhile, two back here to defend the base. Anyway, with two here on top, if I'm the enemy team and I see two here on top, I just take my five and push up the mid and go kill that inhibitor. Maybe keep one person back. Maybe, like, keep one here to defend and then send the other four straight up the middle. Um, I mean, again, I have the we do have the advantage of sight, we can see, but... Um, I, I, like, I just feel like the enemy team is not making any attempt to win this game here. Anyway, it looks like they're just going to head straight for this tower. And where is the enemy team? I, uh, they're just going to give up this tower, apparently, for nothing. Like, where is the enemy team? Where are they? Why are they not coming out to defend this? They're going to give up tower and in him. Oh, so they went and did Baron. Okay, so they were at Baron, I guess. Looks like the enemy team went and did Baron. But that is still a big-time mistake to, to let the other team 
get that get that inhib with twisted fate and the teleporting sivir having that having this base tower down is a huge deal they can go for that inhib all day anyway if i'm a uh, Anyway, I would not fight this here. I don't know why they're going into fight. Remember, 4v5 and the enemy team has Baron. I don't know what the logic is here. I don't know why they're going in after this. Anyway, Bristol's going to pop his ult. Can he make it out? Yes! Going to teleport back to the base. Nice use of the Twisted Fate ult there. Teleporting back to the base, but that was a terrible fight for Bristol's team to engage in. I mean, just awful. Why would you fight the enemy team 4v5 when they have Baron? Um, I mean, I've... They should have just gone uh, gone back and defended their base. Just wait for that Baron buff to wear off. I mean, the lanes are going to push because they have that inhibitor down. So, anyway, don't understand that. But now, once again, it's a 5 on 1. If they don't get the inhibitor on this push, I, I don't even know what to say if they don't get it on this push. Again, just walk up and tank the tower. Tank the tower. Just take it down. Oh, they're wasting so much time here. You don't need to waste for, wait for minions here, guys. We're at the 55-minute point of the game. And look at this. Look at this. They took down the tower in one second. Look at that. That's, that's just nuts. Um, there was no need to wait for that minion. Anyway, Bristol's uh, should not have decided to defend that. Uh, there's no possible way he could have defended that against five members of the team. Should not have come out and tried to fight that. I know you hate to give up those inhibs for nothing, but Bristol's that one you just needed to let them have. And now you're going to be down for 45 seconds. So it's going to be a five on three right now. Um, again, they can just straight tank this tower. Like, just have a Mumu walk in and straight tank it. If everybody walks up and hits it together, it'll go down really fast. Um, so it doesn't look like they're doing that. It doesn't look like they're missing that. Oh, but look at this. Here comes Magic Sarah with a back door teleporting over there. Really nicely done. So the enemy team is going to get this tower, but they need to send somebody back into the base right now. Need to send somebody back to defend with that Sivir push. Uh, Sivir is heading straight for the Nexus. Uh-oh, this is really dangerous to the enemy team. There they go. Looks like someone's going to try to blue pill here and head back, but but Magic Sarah is just straight taking down the Nexus turrets. There goes the first one. Um, so she's already got one. Is she going to be able to get this next one now? Vigar is coming in, but um, Magic Sarah is pretty strong right now. If they just straight up 1v1, she might be able to win that. Uh, anyway, the rest of the enemy team is... I don't know what they're doing. They're just kind of running around in the base, not doing all that much. Oh, and now Bristol's going to ult in here as well, and they're going to take down Vigar. Now, can they get this other Nexus turret? Yes, they have both Nexus turrets. Are they going to be able to finish off the Nexus itself down to 4,000 HP, 3,700? And no, not going to be able to win the game there. The enemy team's uh, Sivir is going to finish that off. So, wow, they are not going to win the game right there, but they did take down both Nexus turrets against a Twisted Fate. So this is big time trouble for the enemy team. Without those Nexus turrets, Twisted Fate can just gate in any time he wants and instantly kill the Nexus. The enemy team has to keep one champion right here at the Nexus at all times. At least one, maybe two champs. If they ever send all five champs out of the base, then their Nexus is just dead uh, because Twisted Fate will just gate in and kill it. So very, very... That was a great play for the uh, team that Bristol's is on here to get those two Nexus turrets. That was the strength of the teleporting Sivir and the Twisted Fate back door just coming in and taking them down. So where it looked like the enemy team was going to push into the base and maybe just end the game there. Instead, they lost their two Nexus turrets and now they're, they are in a heap of trouble. I mean, they still are in a good shape. They still have the inhib down. For Bristol's team and they still are getting close to pushing into the base but as I said they have to keep a champion back here at all points in time or Bristol's can just ult into the base and the game will be over just like that because uh, he can kill the enemy team's nexus very very quickly. Anyway, Bristol's did sell his Majai's Soul Stealer, which I think was the right move, as I said. He's picked up Sword of the Divine for the extra attack speed instead. Um, extra attack speed, more useful for pushing down pushing down inhibitors, pushing down uh, towers. More, uh, more useful to kill the Nexus quickly. Anyway, you can see they do have, they have kept Sivir back here to defend the base. That's a good call there. Uh, exactly what the enemy team need to do, so good call there, as I said. Meanwhile, three members of the enemy team here. I'm not sure what they're doing right here. They need to be going for this tower here. They probably should be killing these minions and trying to push in from that side of the base. But four back here defending. At some point, I feel like Bristol's is going to try to gate in and try to take out that Nexus. They're just, just waiting. For, just, we're just kind of waiting for him to go for it. He does have his stack deck queued up. You can see his next attack is going to deal bonus damage. So anyway, here comes a Mumu trying to push that minion wave. Oh, he's going to have to go soon. That inhibitor is going to respawn soon. Once that inhib respawns, then Bristol's can't go straight for the Nexus. So he's going to have to be careful here. Once that inhib respawns, that will add a lot of safety back to the enemy team. 
So anyway, you can see they are still pushing on this tower. If they can get this tower down and get a second in him, that'll be a pretty big deal here. So anyway, it looks like Bristol's is trying to defend the base right now. Oh, in comes Amumu, aggressive bandage toss, but he is super tanky by now at this point in time. And uh, doesn't look like they're going to be able to engage. Anyway, that inhib has respawned, so Bristol's will have to kill the inhib before he can go for the Nexus. Remember, you cannot just straight attack a Nexus with as long as all three inhibs are up in order to stop that kind of backdooring. So anyway, here's that here's that Sivir for the other team. Uh, really good decision just to keep the enemy team Sivir right here to stop this backdoor. So he's going to save that inhibitor. That means it's a four on four here. Now they could go in and engage on the enemy team while that Sivir is not there. If they can kill the other three, the other four members of the enemy team, and uh, if they can kill them, oh uh oh, here comes Bristol's. But Bristol's, you can't kill the Nexus. That that inhibitor is still up. Uh oh, this is looking really really bad. And yeah, that is not going to work out. So uh oh, that's trouble. And up here now uh oh brand has gotten killed too and renekton's gotten killed that should be it guys this should be the end of the game all they need to do is push down the two nexus turrets and the game is over they have minions there's no what i don't know what uh, what why uh why ezreal is what is ezreal doing he's actually gonna die here oh i don't understand that at all why is he going down there they just need to kill these towers kill these two towers kill this other nexus tower and the game is over but Wow, with Ezreal dying, I'm not even sure if they ha they're going to be able to finish this off. They don't have minions here. So that should have been the end of the game. But uh, it, they're all teleporting back to base. So this is actually going to keep going here. Wow. Um, that's really surprising. And the inhib is actually going to respawn now. So actually, Bristol's team is now going to have all their inhibs back up. Well, for five seconds anyway. It looks like they are going to kill this inhib. So Magic Sir doing a, a pretty good job here of, of keeping them alive. But... There's still the enemy team. They they could have won the game there. All they had to do was all attack the Nexus turrets, and the game was over. And uh, they delayed again. It's like they don't want to win this game. So anyway, this Amumu is going for this inhibitor. Bristol's going to come down with the gold card. Going to force that. Going to force the retreat there from that Amumu. Oh, but no. Now he's coming back in again. Bristol's going for that Vigar. I feel like he could chase down that Vigar. He does have still the Lich Bane for the extra movement speed. I feel like he could have chased down that Vigar, but doesn't look like he's going to. Anyway, the enemy team brand is coming in here. Still a very precarious position. Either At, at this point, it's almost hard to tell who's going to win. Um, now, uh, again, uh, Bristol's can go for can go for the uh, Nexus again. If he can gate in and take, out, take down that inhibitor, they'll be able to go for it. So we'll see. I, I, I have to feel like he's going to go for this again. They're not going to win this game off of just a normal traditional push unless the enemy team does something really stupid and gets aced or something. I feel like they're going to have to win this off of a back door. Um, Baron, they're pinging Baron. Baron doesn't really mean that much at this stage of the game. I mean, we're into the 61st minute, so it doesn't really mean that much. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this. Uh, Bristol's has picked up a sight word here. Um, what they can do is Bristol's can teleport in and, and throw down a sight word, and then then uh, then Sivir can teleport to the sight word. Yes, that's what they're going to go for. So they now have two champs in the enemy team's base. Are they going to be able to kill the enemy team Sivir? And yes, they are going to kill the enemy team Sivir. So they've gotten the inhib. Now they just need to finish off this Nexus. Can they get this Nexus? 4,000 HP. No, Vigar going to kill Bristol's. Is, is Sivir going to finish it off? 2,400 hit points. 2,000? No! 1,600 HP. They are not going to get the nexus wow so close but they are not going to finish this off so wow two kills for the enemy team two kills for bristol's team it's a 3v2 right now but that nexus is still alive it's gonna slowly regenerate health but inhibitor is down again so that means that when Bristol's comes back, he can try going for it again. That play to, to pick up the wards and have Bristol's gate in and then Magic Sivir, Magic Sarah Sivir teleport in. Just really brilliantly done. Now Bristol's has sold his wards and picked up an Infinity Edge. Just picked up straight Infinity Edge with all the gold he had. He had 4,000 gold in his inventory. So he's completely reshuffled his build. He's gone from straight AP to sort of a bizarre hybrid build here with the Sword of the Divine and the Infinity Edge along with the Death Cap the Abyssal and the Lich Bane. So crazy stuff here. The enemy team still really close to winning this game. I mean, oh, there's only one Nexus turret here. If they can ever get a decent push into the base, they can just push down this Nexus turret and then get the Nexus. But again, that Nexus so exposed without the Nexus turrets. The Inhib is still down. Bristol's is 
I feel like he's gonna have to go for this at some point. Bristles is gonna have to go for this back door. We're just gonna wait for him. I'm gonna gotta wait for him to pop that ult. Enemy team is slowly pushing down the base. I don't know why they would go for this outer tower instead of going for this in Hib. There's no tower here to defend it. I feel like they should just go straight here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's going to gain in. Going to gain in behind the Nexus. Oh, Sivir's right there. But is she going to be able to do this? Bristol's ju juking back and forth behind the Nexus. 1,000 HP, 200 HP, and down it goes. Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate backdoor. GG for the win. Incredible game incredible game there maybe not the best played game at times a lot of sloppy stuff on both times but wow what an exciting ending all right in terms of the stats here bristol's one of the busiest games i've ever seen 25 20 and 9 crazy stuff he he went probably went through like 20,000 gold in that game changed his item build around so many times but the backdooring at the end beautiful to watch i love the play with the teleporting magic sarah sivir right at the end buying a ward throwing down the ward and then having sivir teleport to the ward in order to get down that inhibitor and almost kill the nexus but get it low enough so that they could finish it off on the for on the back door after that as far as the rest of the team i mean brand and renekton played solidly i mean i, I hate that renekton build double war mogs is just an awful awful build there's no point in being tanky if you if you can't do any damage whatsoever so it's just just a really silly build so i'm not a big fan of that brand better off but brand died over and over and over again too they really leaned heavily on on Bristol's Twisted Fate in order to get most of the kills. And of course, Shaco disconnected, and Shaco did very, very little. I mean, he actually did a good job of controlling Dragon early in the game, but they had to play the final 30 minutes of this game with no Shaco. So a brilliant 4v5 win. Just a great game, really fun. I've actually had this for a couple weeks now. I've been meaning to cast it whenever, as soon as I had a chance. Just takes a long time to cast these 65-minute games that go on and on and on. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I think it was worth the, worth the wait. Not too often you see a game with 92 kills that comes down to literally the final minute of the game and you've got one team trying to push down the push into the enemy team's base as twisted fate is madly backdooring on the other side of the map so anyway once again thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this and check back soon I'll have more videos up until then take care guys i'll see you soon